Sovereign Rollups are a unique type of rollup in that they aren't layer 2s. They are more akin to layer 1s who outsource their consensus and data to other chains. They have their own ecosystem and rules and retain their sovereignty even if they are sharing security with another chain. By outsourcing to other chains, it allows them to achieve high throughputs. The big problem with normal layer 1 chains is that in order to validate the network yourself, you need to run a full node. For chains like Bitcoin, which don't handle many transactions, this is fine and many people can afford to run their own nodes. However, if you want to validate a chain like Solana, you require a beefy computer to be running with an excellent internet connection, which only a few people can afford to do, so you end up having to trust that validators won't misbehave. Sovereign rollups aim to be able to validate a chain like Solana using nodes even more lightweight than Bitcoin. In this video, I'll go over how they aim to achieve that. If we look at a typical block for a blockchain, it is split between the block header and the transactions. The block header contains a few key pieces of data, like a reference to the previous block, as well as the Merkle roots of the transactions in the block and the Merkle root of the state, alongside other variables that are generally used for consensus. Then the transactions are just a list of all the transactions in the block. The goal of sovereign rollups is to create a chain where light clients who just download the block header can be just as secure as full nodes who download the entire block. This means you could increase the number of transactions in the block massively without requiring people to use more powerful nodes. First, let's take a look at what the problems are with a normal blockchain that only has light clients. The first big problem is that light clients don't actually know if all the transactions in the block are valid. Normally, full nodes will verify and process every transaction and hash them together to see if they get the same Merkle root as the block header. With just light nodes, a block producer like a miner could create fake transactions, giving themselves 100 Bitcoin, and the light nodes wouldn't realize. To solve this problem, sovereign rollups use the same type of fraud and validity proofs that optimistic and zero knowledge rollups use. When a block is produced, the block producer also has to produce a proof that the block and all the transactions in the block are valid. This proof can be a part of the block header. Now, light clients can trust that the Merkle root in the block header is made only from valid transactions and the block producer hasn't added fake transactions to the block. If the block producer tries to add fake transactions, the proof in the block header won't be valid, so light nodes can reject the block. However, the next problem is that even though light nodes may have a Merkle root of all the transactions in the block, they don't actually know what the transactions are. If everyone is running light nodes, then the only ones who know the transactions in the blocks are the block producers. If the block producers don't share this data, then all you have is just a valid chain where no one knows what they have, so no one can do anything. This is where sovereign rollups start outsourcing to other chains to solve the problem. Chains like Celestia specialize purely in data availability, and Ethereum with dank sharding will also use similar techniques. These chains will have methods where data is split up among many nodes, so it should be very cheap to send data to them. They will also have methods where you can subsample small parts of the data to confirm that none of it is missing and it can be recreated if needed. Sovereign rollups can use these chains to their advantage and have block producers send the entire block to Celestia or Ethereum. So now, if anyone needs any data, they can check on the other chain. Light clients can subsample a few pieces of data from the other chain to confirm that the block producer has posted the data and it's available for anyone who needs it. If the data isn't available, they can consider the block invalid. Posting blocks to another chain actually solves another problem of ordering the blocks. Having your own consensus method where you need to reward miners or stakers can be expensive if you want a good level of security. If you have a weak consensus, you could end up in a situation where a block producer has more than 51% of the consensus weight and is able to create an opposing fork of blocks with valid proofs and data available which reorganizes the chain and potentially double spends. Because sovereign rollups post their blocks to another chain, they can take advantage of the fact that the blocks will have been ordered by the other chain's consensus method and create their own fork rules based on this order, which could be as simple as just considering the first block to appear on the other chain as the winner of the fork. Sovereign rollups do have their own nodes and can decide their own rules, so even though they may share consensus with another chain, if the other chain gets hacked or misbehaves, the rollup nodes can fork to use a different consensus method if needed, so they aren't completely reliant on the other chain. 
They could even set up their own consensus method, although then they would no longer be called rollups and would have a different name. With Sovereign rollups borrowing consensus from another chain, they can make the block producers completely leaderless and allow anyone to post a block. Some sort of civil protection method would be needed to prevent people spamming blocks, so proof of work or stake may still be used, but it won't be important for security. Now let's round up how Sovereign rollups work. With a Sovereign rollup, anyone can be a block producer, but there will be some sort of civil protection to prevent people from spamming blocks. Block producers are likely to be powerful machines, as they will need to be able to keep up with all the transactions that get posted, and they should be able to make big blocks with lots of transactions. When they produce a block, they will send the block header to all the light clients, but they also have to include either a fraud or validity proof in the block header so that light clients can confirm that they aren't faking any transactions. They also have to post the entire block to another chain like Celestia or Ethereum, which allows the light clients to subsample a small part of the data to confirm that the data is available if needed. The other chain will order the blocks using their own consensus method, so the sovereign rollup can use this order in their own fork rules in case there are any conflicts. In this video, I've described sovereign rollups as only having light clients to show that it's possible, but there will also be people running full nodes like block explorers. Full nodes make it easier for people to access data instead of having to go to Celestia or Ethereum all the time. With this setup, you have a powerful chain capable of processing a huge number of transactions while still allowing the average user to validate the state of the chain is correct on low powered light clients, meaning you can keep a high level of decentralization. These characteristics of having high throughput as well as high decentralization are why many projects are likely to use sovereign rollups in the future. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to catch my future content.